the Fantasy Source Football Podcast. My name is David A. Arnott, standing here with George Winkler and Sean Not Lights Out Merriman. Just to be clear, this is a guy who works with us. We love the guy. It's not the linebacker for the Buffalo Bills. That's just to be clear. Today, we are talking about the week that was, week three, in the books, fantasy football owners, some crying, some cheering. George, who are the ones that are cheering at the moment? Well, there have been a lot of gigantic performances early in the season, uh, none more so than Darren McFadden of the Oakland Raiders. If you own him or LaShawn McCoy, then you're likely leading the standings in your league. And the good news for McFadden is after he has the Patriots this week, he has Houston, Cleveland, and Kansas City. So the good times are still here as long as this guy can stay healthy. I think before the season, McFadden was a, was a trendy first-round pick because he'd ended last season so well. When he had played, he'd been very good. Uh, do you think that he's far exceeding expectations? And, you know, you already mentioned a little bit of the schedule. Rest of the season, do you think that he's going to be a top two or three running back? I think he could. Um the thing with him was always like we knew he was good, but can he take it to the next level? And right now he's right there with Adrian Peterson, who's the perennial number one overall pick. And what we see with McFadden and McCoy is these are players that can get it done with all-purpose yards. They can do it through the air, through the ground. So if something's not working on a week, they can pick it up elsewhere. Very fascinating to see that in standard leads, Darren McFadden, LaShawn McCoy, and Fred Jackson, of all people, are the top three running backs. That's according to the, to the stats on Fantasy Source. Uh, are, you, are you basically saying that, you know what, like, if you have those guys, are you going to expect, Fred Jackson specifically, are you going to expect him to keep going well at least? I mean, McCoy, he's been getting, even with the Michael Vick problem, are you expecting him to keep going? That's the one problem with McCoy is how healthy can Vick stay, but... I think McCoy's good enough. He's in his prime that he can get it done even with a lesser quarterback there. The guy, like you said, who could be a sell-high candidate here is Fred Jackson. He's 30 years old. We never expected the Bills' offense to perform like this. Can they keep it going? If I have Fred Jackson, I think it's the guy I look to sell high on right there. And then, Sean, you've got a guy on your fantasy team in the Sporting News Experts League. He must be really disappointing to you right now, C.J. Tutte. I do. Um, you know, after that lengthy holdout that he had there, I, uh, I, I, took, a, I took a flyer on him. I took him early. I made, took the risk that he was going to perform like he has been in the past couple seasons. And uh, Johnson has, you know, let down the majority of his owners thus far. Um, he's, he's, he hasn't led up to the production that we expected of him. Last game, he had just 21 carries on, or sorry, 13 carries for 21 yards which is, you know, an average of, what, less than two yards a carry. So not, uh, not what owners have expected of him Yeah, I mean, look at, looking at the stats on Fantasy Source, again, he's the 36th running back in standard leagues. Uh, I'm going to guess that you're going to advise owners to have some patience with him, but how far do you expect that patience? What is that bar where you finally say, I'm, I've had enough? You know, after this week, I kind of was in the mindset of, Wow, should I sell this guy? Should I, you know, should I get rid of him? See what I can get. But it looks like honestly, it can't get any worse for him <laughs> unless he gets an injury. Kenny Britt went down with an injury, who's been their number one receiver. Uh Hasselbeck has been kind of surprising at the quarterback position, but you would assume now with that injury to Britt, they're gonna try to establish the run. They really don't have much of a choice. So personally, I'm gonna try to stick with him. He has some good matchups coming up here, and I would advise everyone else, give it maybe one or two more weeks. If this is still going on, see what you can get, but hold off on him. You know, he's such a talent that uh, it it almost seems impossible to just sell him right now. I mean, it was just a couple years ago that with not that much talent around him, he was very either the first or the second running back in all of fantasy. Right after the break, we're going to be talking about waiver pickups. I think there are a few guys, maybe a University of Maryland guy that's on the list there. And we're going to come back after this. So, George, waiver pickups. I mean, you, 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 you want to use your waiver pickups judiciously, and yet... It seems like every week that in competitive leads, at least, the waiver pickups, they're slim pickings. So who are you looking at as possible waiver pickups this week? 
Well, the guy that keeps bubbling to the top in, in all your, your leagues is Tory Smith of the Ravens that you mentioned, the University of Maryland product. Speedster comes out and gets three touchdowns against the Rams in the first quarter. But I think that was a case of him in a good matchup against the, a secondary that was beat up. And the Ravens are going to face the Jets this week, and then they're going to have a bye week. And there's always the specter of Lee Evans. You know, he's been hurt with an ankle injury. It's a heck of a specter, by the way. <laughs> that is a specter. But he's the same type of guy. He's a deep threat. Flacco does throw the nice deep ball. They need that in their offense. But who's going to get the, the catches going forward? That's, that's a big guess. And is it worth that top waiver claim to burn it right now on Torrey Smith? I don't think it is. Well, I mean, what separates him from, say, Denarius Moore, who last week was one of the top guys that everyone really wanted? Not much. I mean, and I didn't want people to pick up Denarius Moore either because he's a Raiders receiver. There's a lot of them there. Competition. He happened to get in the end zone this week on a on an end around, which was fortunate for him because his day wasn't looking too great up until that point. So with these wide receivers, it's going to be one hot guy one week, one hot guy the next week. That's just how it goes. And and I really like to save my waiver claims for uh, an, a running back who's coming into a good situation, that surprise back that we see every year. Uh, Sean, I mean, some of the, we often say at Fantasy Source that boring can be good, you know, and that the exciting guy like Torrey Smith isn't necessarily the guy that you want to get. But maybe you want to go for someone boring like Nate Washington, who's been around the block a few times, or even someone like Bernard Scott, who's going to get a chance with Cedric Benson out. Well, as we mentioned earlier, you know, with Kenny Britt coming out, Nate Washington kind of takes over that number one receiver role in that offense. And, um, you know, Matt Hasselbeck, he's still got something left in the tank. You have to assume that this guy is going to come in and he's going to get, you know, six or so, maybe more catches a game and be productive like he has been even with Britt there. Um, and then with Bernard Scott, he comes into a situation, you know, where Cedric Benson has that three-game suspension. He steps in. Scott's kind of a guy that everyone has been waiting around with the past couple of years, expecting to break out, and it hasn't happened. But, you know, Cincinnati is in a situation. They have a rookie quarterback. They're going to run the ball no matter who's in that backfield. So you know that Scott's going to get his touches. And he's the type of guy that it just may take one big play to break out. Now, George, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying Torrey Smith, even if he has upside potential, as they say, you're not even touching him because Bernard Scott is a million times more valuable than him. Well, Bernard Scott and maybe Kendall Hunter of the San Francisco 49ers. You have Frank Gore dinged up with an ankle injury. Um, he had to come out of that game late against the Bengals, and Hunter ended up scoring the game-winning touchdown. You know, they have a great matchup against Philadelphia. The Eagles are giving up something ridiculous, like five, six yards a carry. And whoever gets those carries against the Eagles this Sunday, you know, could be a, a third running back play. All right, well, we've been talking about some waiver pickups. We're going to talk about some more, especially given the bye weeks that are upcoming right after this. <laughs> So we've been talking about running backs, but those aren't the only positions. Running backs and wide receivers, those are the sexy positions, but those aren't the only positions in fantasy. There are also defenses where you can gain an edge. And I think that defenses also, it's a little bit underrated to say, you know what, there are a lot of people out there that just say, you know, I'm just, I drafted my defense, I'm just going to roll with it no matter what. And I'm one of those people, but when it comes <laughs> to the bye weeks, I like to remind people that they're coming. It's week five is when everything starts. We'll start to have six teams off each week for the next four weeks. And I, I'm a big fan of the preemptive bye week pickup. And this week's preemptive bye week pickup is, That's very the, catchy, by the way. is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. I thought they came alive against Atlanta, sacking Matt Ryan four times. They're, they have a young defensive line. They started to gain confidence there. And, you know, if you have Dallas or Baltimore off in week five, I say go out and pick up these guys because the Bucks have the Colts and Curtis Painter this week, and then they have the 49ers next week. 
So, you know, you're look, looking not only as a bye week replacement, they might be better than your defense. Dallas faces Detroit this week. Yeah, that's no sure yeah, thing. I mean, that's not exactly the greatest show on turf right there when you go to the, the Niners like that. Uh, the one that I look at right now as having a great schedule moving forward, even though they may not look so great on leaderboards, are the Houston Texans defense. I mean, they've got a bye in week 11, and until then – they basically have Pittsburgh as the best offense that they're going to play, uh, and even then, I, I'm not that I'm not that worried about them facing against Pittsburgh because I'm going to be going with I'm going to be going with my defense and not worrying about the waiver pickups at that point. I mean, but as far as the preemptive bye week filler, I mean, I've got two running bats that are in week seven that have their buys in week seven. Do either of you guys, let's start with you, Sean, do you think that it's a little bit too early to be going after somebody that might be coming on the waiver wire now in order to pick, in order to fill in that spot? I don't think so necessarily. I think a lot of that as far as waiver wire fill-ins has to do with what kind of depth you have on your bench and what positions you're specifically looking to fill. Um, you know, injuries have been a lot this year so far. We have seen a ton of them. Maybe that has to do with uh, the off season being shortened. Maybe not. But if you were, you know, if you're in a position where you had a Kenny Britt or you had a Jamal Charles, and you need to fill these positions, you need to do whatever you can to get that guy on your team that shows some consistency as well. I think consistency is a big thing that you know is important in you know going forward in fantasy. Because we've seen some breakout performances, and then a guy will drop off. Cam Newton, a prime example of that. He had two 400-yard games, and then he has a below-average game this year. So look for some consistency when you're making those waiver wire pickups. Now, George, are you on that same boat there where, for instance, I had Tashard Choice, who was on my bench. He wasn't going to be starting anytime soon. This is before I had some injury problems with my starters. But I dropped him thinking, you know what, like, I'm going to worry about the Week 7 thing later. I dropped him because I had to fill in a wide receiver hole. My third wide receiver, not even my first two, fill my third wide receiver. I'm going to take care of that now. Would you say that that's a little bit rash considering that Choice, even if he's a lottery ticket, might be a good lottery ticket a few weeks from now? Well, I th- I think that, l- like Sean said, it's your situation. Um, if you really need that guy that week, you need to win now and worry about week seven later. Um, with choice, I'm a Felix Jones owner, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to choice. But I'll give you another example. I picked up John Kitna this week just in case Tony Romo didn't go because it was a Monday night game and I needed the option on Monday night. So who would you have dropped for him? Uh, for, for John Kitna? Yeah. Uh, well, I dropped... Like somebody worthless. I can't even remember okay. who it somebody was. Somebody worthless. It, yeah, it was uh, basically uh, like a fourth or fifth wide receiver. And, I, and I'm looking at, but I'm looking at dropping Kitna this week because even though Romo didn't look that great, I'm feeling a little bit comfortable. I need the roster space for that extra defense that I talked about to get through the bye week. Okay, so basically what, what I gather you guys are saying is win now, ask questions later. Does that sound fair? I would say that's right on. <laughs> I would say win now, but keep a little eye to the future, too. <laughs> okay. All right, George, Sean, thank you for joining us on the Fantasy Social Football Podcast. Okay, thank you. Thank you.